welcome to Cogcam, the internet's first first-person video of how to do lab. We will open up Origin Pro, which is free for U of I students, to make the plots for our lab reports. And I'm going to use that X-ray diffraction data that we just saved as an ASCII to make the first graph here. So we're going to import a single ASCII and look up where we saved that data. And it's an it's actually a text. There we go. Our table salt text file. Okay, so the first axis here should actually be the angle 2 theta. So let's change the name there. 2 theta. And the units are degrees. And you can see that in this row here, Origin automatically plots what this data looks like. And for our x-axis, our 2 theta, it in increases linearly. So there's a line there. Now in our, our next column, Origin is automatically assigned as a y-axis, which is correct. This is our y, this should be on our y-axis, and it is the intensity of the x-ray diffraction signal, and the units are counts per second. And if you need to remember that, that actually was on the printout from the instrument. And you can see this is a preview of what that data looks like, and that should look familiar from your printout of your data. So we made this now as a pro. Let's save our, save our project so far. We started to make a profile. Now all we have to do is make a plot, a line plot, And there it is. To make it conform to what we want to do in our lab reports, for this particular data set, there's only one line, so you really don't need a legend. So let's just delete that. You see that the y-axis is correctly labeled with units. The x-axis is correctly labeled with units. But another thing the computer did, which is kind of annoying, is that it leaves this white space here. So, since we did not start the instrument at 0, 2 theta, we need to adjust the axis scale. So double clicking on that should pull up an axis menu and start at 20 and go to 120. So we want to fill the area of the graph with the data. Okay, and then the same thing here on intensity, our most intense peak is about 600 counts per second, but we don't have any peaks that are negative, so let's adjust this y-axis scale to start at 0 and go to 600. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that looks good. We've filled the space with our, our graph, and notice there's a little asterisk here, which means that we made changes to the graph that we haven't saved yet. So once we save it, that asterisk goes away. Now we can export the graph and let's export it so that we can then import it into our Word lab report. And we could export it, you can see, in a number of formats. Let's just make a JPEG. That's usually a good format. And now we go down to Word we should be able to input this into a, our lab report template. You can see here this is the lab, lab report template from the American Chemical Society. So this is our uh, determination of an unknown cubic crystal by powder x-ray diffraction. So you want to give a title that is specific 
and detailed enough so people know what your report is about. Author names. Let put in who who's here. And I'm going to be the corresponding author, so I'm going to put asterisk by my name. Address, so your affiliation is University of Illinois Department of Chemistry, University of Illinois Springfield. So keywords maybe for this are like powder, x-ray, diffraction, structural characterization. Okay. It's not on the template, but I want you to include date submitted. I'm not going to actually write the lab report, but just to get us started there, we're going to include a, you're including a figure here, and read through this about how the figure should be formatted. And we made this graph, here it is, it's in our origin file. And so you want to make sure that once that image is imported into the template that it's still legible because it, it's going to have to shrink to fit this uh, two column format. And the numbers here are very plain, straight, and large enough to be legible. The Axi text is plain, plain font that's legible even when it's small like this. And you can you can see the data even this small peak right here. So otherwise you can go back to origin to change the you could change the line size or the font size or any of these things by double clicking on them it'll pull up a pull up various formatting windows and menus. Um, see font size we could change the type of font, the size of the font and so on. We made our figure figure 1 This is powder x-ray oh, diffraction of so sodium chloride and our wavelength 2.29 angstroms and We want uh, lambda there for wavelength, and we want angstroms here, which insert symbol angstrom. There we go. So we have a descriptive caption to go with our figure. In addition, we need to make a table. So we need a table of, this is actually our second data table for this particular lab report, because you need a data table for indexing of the sample powder pattern from the online tutorial. So this is the data table for indexing the powder pattern that we actually did. So this is the index of the powder x-ray diffraction of sodium chloride. So we have a descriptive table title. We need the two theta data tabulated. How many columns? Two theta, theta, the k factor, the sine squared factor, 
uh, h squared plus k squared plus l, l squared, and then the hkl. Okay, so, well, and, and a if we do that. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 peaks it looks like. Okay, so what did we say? There we go. So 2 theta, theta, sine squared, theta, k sine squared, theta, h squared, k squared, l squared, h, k, l, a. And this should be theta, not q. There we go. Control Shift Plus makes the shortcut key for sine squared. Remember, k is just our fudge factor to get the the sine squared theta value to a to an integer. K squared plus It's, not, it's actually a plus, but anyway. Our, for, our table's not quite formatted yet. Let's go back with origin. We can find out what the values are for these peaks. So, use this screen reader to find where the peak is. So that peak is at x41.18. And x is the 2 theta, so we got 41.18 degrees. We have a peak here, 48.07. A peak here, 48.07. Eighty-nine point five four, and let's add one more row. One hundred eight point seven one. Okay, and this table isn't quite formatted the way it needs to be for the publication. So let's work on that. Design, change the design to. Let's get rid of all the borders right now. And instead, we just underline this first one here. There. OK, and then you'll do calculations and fill out the rest of this data table. And you might have to change the font size to fit on this small print format. It's the beginning of your lab report, and you can, of course, continue editing and calculating to fill out the rest of the lab report. <laughs>